Amit Jaswani, founder at Stallion Asset Management, is joining us on the show right now. Amit, good morning to you. What are you doing and what are you advising clients? Hi, Devina. Good morning and thank you for having me on your show. Uh, well, we're looking at companies that can scale up. See, India was a $1 trillion economy in 2008. We've reached two and a half trillion dollar economy. That means broadly the, the, the GDP is gone up one and a half times. But how many companies have been able to scale up in this stage? Except for Page Industry, Bajaj Finance, probably and Aisha Motor, there are only a few companies who've been able to scale up. So even though the opportunity in every segment you see is large, there are only a few entrepreneurs who can actually scale up. Uh, what are we doing? Well, we are 90% invested already, so there's nothing much we can do in the markets. We have 10% cash, but we'll, the, the, the first phase of the market, uh, so we are actually in the last phase of selling in the market. Now the quality stocks are falling. So page industry is down 30-40%. Yesterday there was, there was a large block there. Uh, Aisha is down 30%. Maruti is down 30%. So this is basically the last stage of the bear market where uh, the strong quality stocks are falling. Every H and I, no, the mid cap portfolios have not recovered properly in this uprise, this small uprise in the last two three months. So uh, that's that's one place where everyone wants to sell on rise. So this is a typical sentiment which which indicates that you know the bottom is somewhere near. It's probably one month away, two months away. But that, that that's like around March is the time that we expect the markets to bottom out and we shall be fully invested. There have been very a few companies which are going the right way, like, like Reliance and all those kind of companies. They're just showing mind-blowing growth in various business segments. So those are the kind of stocks that you need to be invested in. People who can scale up with, that, with large opportunity, you need promoters who can scale up. So that's where we are focusing on. Mm -hmm. Amit, uh, you know, coming narrowing it down to specific stocks, and I would like your opinion on the stocks that you just highlighted, and, and that they've come off about 20, 30 percent. So, would that be an opportunity to enter them? And secondly, um, you know, if you've been tracking uh, Prabhat Dairy, and is that something that you would write off as well? You know, because you've got uh, coverages from most brokerages getting dropped for uh, Prabhat Dairy now that the business itself is uh, out of, out of uh, the portfolio. So we typically back leaders. So Prabhat Dairy, we don't track it a lot. But yesterday I was reading a few notes. So the deals happen at 1700 crores. They'll have to pay somewhere around 250 crores or taxes. So they'll be left with about 14, 1500 crores. And then if you think that they'll pay 100% dividend, you get about like 280 crores taxes would again go because you have to pay 20% dividend distribution taxes. So broadly, the upside, the maximum upside which can happen is about 105, 10. So, so that's the maximum upside. Now, I, I don't, I wouldn't like to comment. I don't know what's happening there. But yesterday, I don't know why people were buying it so, so much because these kind of promoters normally do not distribute uh, uh, it back to the shareholders. I don't know what's happening there, so I'm sorry I'm not tracking it very closely. But majority cases, you have Lille, you have so many examples where promoters have not distributed wealth. And the downside is 80-90% if they don't distribute wealth. So they'll give, give uh, money to the related party company and all those kind of things happen. So we don't do that, we don't buy those kind of stuff. So I don't know, I'm not tracking it so well. No, fair point. but. I think we got the message. I mean, the math was important. Uh, our calculations also suggested that because it's a step down subsidiary, a double taxation would uh, probably not lead them to distribute that entire amount to the primary shareholders of Prabhat Dairy. Let's see, the management has said that they will distribute the max, but even that might not be good enough. The stock done about 15% in trade. Uh, Amit, uh, just uh, good morning, Neeraj. I'm just wondering, uh, when you, when you spoke about uh, the quality companies and leaders making the difference, I think one stock that firmly fits that bill or, f or all through and through is Sun Pharma. Last six or nine odd months involved in uh, well a lot of issues and the last three days have been as long as the last three years. What's the verdict now? Uh, not about a buy or a sell, but whether what they've done takes care of the issues at hand. Yeah, this is a very tough call, Neeraj. Actually, pharma was the leader of the previous bull market. So we've been avoiding pharma throughout the last three, four years. So we've not been tracking pharma at all. You need to look at newer leaders which are emerging. So uh, 
you know look at look like look at stocks like dvs okay those are stocks which are hitting new highs and that there are only two three stocks which are hitting new highs that's where we are looking at actually we're not even looking at what's happening in sun pharma or what's happening in lupin anymore because these guys will now take a lot of time to come back because everyone has accumulated it people bought sun pharma at 1000 900 800 700 600 and every time they bought they thought they're buying it cheap so uh, we've not been looking there we're looking at stocks which are making new highs because typically the stocks which make new highs first lead the bull market up so we are concentrating on which stocks to buy on the way up you should look at the results of reliance and all those kind of companies and they are coming with outstanding kind of numbers they're scaling up really well they're deleveraging and uh, you know those are the kind of companies you need to bet in the india story uh, pharma we, we we never understood it so well we use a lot of outside analysts to understand pharma but we don't have any strong views on sun pharma Amit, I'll just come to you within the aviation pack and uh, today we're getting into globe aviation numbers and also we're going to be closely and keenly watching out for what Jet Airways does this quarter. But what's your sense as to what's going to happen while the expectations is that on a quarter on quarter basis there might be some stability in inter-globe aviation, still performance will remain muted. See, the thematic theme is there that leaders with the lowest cost structure typically keep gaining market share. So that's there with Indigo. Quarter over quarter, these kind of companies, it's very difficult to predict because 35, 40% cost is crude. Now at what price they purchase crude and even the now, this quarter is an important quarter because this will also show pricing power. They were clearly not, all aviation companies were not able to displace, display any pricing power when crude prices went up. So that, that becomes a big problem. Even Indigo uh, reported about 1,000 crores of losses last quarter. So that's a problem if an industry cannot pass on prices at all. Uh, so thematically, if someone has to be invested in aviation, then Interclobe is the only stock he can invest in. Or else he can give it a skip also. There's no big deal in this sector. Okay. And I, uh, well, I kind of half expected this answer from Amit to be honest. But the insurance names that came out with the numbers, uh, Amit, you would be looking at that uh, bucket too. Uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing that quarterly numbers don't necessarily move the needle too much on such large names with long growth trajectories. But are you in the favor of buying any of them or replacing any of them with something else based on the quarterly numbers that have come out? So. Insurance, I'll just explain you in one second what's the whole sure. space about. The industry size of insurance is 4.5 lakh crores. The private player is 1.2 lakh crore. This is the premium that we get. The 4.5 lakh crore is the total premium we get. 1.2 lakh crores is by pri for private players and 3.3 lakh crores is with LIC. So that's the total premium uh, that we have. Now, I, I expect this number to go up to 12, 13 lakh crores in the next 7, 8 years, the 2025 kind of story. Now, will these private players would be 3x bigger, 4x bigger? That can be anyone's call. So that is a lo long theme. Insurance is a great business. The best thing about the insurance business is that except for uh, SBI, ICICI and HDFC, no one can come and sell an insurance because like, if Stalin Asset starts selling insurance, who's going to trust me for 40 years, right? I might be there, not be there after 40 years. So there's a very strong moat. The valuations of these companies trade between three times to six times. HDFC life is at six times. Typically return on EV is the best matrix to use to evaluate how good the company is doing. SBI life and HDFC life are definitely our top picks there. And this is one space that you like you will go wrong on valuation of course these are very expensive things but globally the market cap of insurance companies is larger than the market cap of credit companies like like banks and all that so insurance is the best space because in a credit business you get you make profits when the last emi comes back to you and in the insurance space the only time you pay money is after 30 40 years so this is a great business model this should be part of everyone's portfolio our topics here are sbi and hdfc life we do not even look at quarterly numbers so carefully here so uh, no like i don't know what's happening there uh, like i've not seen the quarterly numbers so well hmm. 
Amit, what's your view on ICICI Bank? Because that seems to be, a, you know, a recent favourite. You know, after the recovery that we've seen in the counter, and also from an operational standpoint, is this the one that could be, you know, a horse for the long race? Of course, you know, there's a change in management. Now, if you look at, uh, like, uh, we might have vested interest, we might not have vested interest here. This is not a recommendation. Uh, uh, so, ICICI Bank, there's a change in management. Everyone we are speaking to is saying very good things about Mr. Bakshi of ICICI and Mr. Amitabh Chakrubarti of Axis Bank. These both banks have got now change in management. If you see the percentage of retail in the portfolio of both these banks, in the last 3-4 years, they've gone up at least 30-40%. So these guys are now more of retail franchisees than corporate, which they were a few years back. I think the worst is behind them. Uh, but this has become a consensus trade, which, which is a problem because every broker who calls me says that buy SBI, uh, buy ICICI and Axis. That's the only downside here, that it's become a super consensus trade. But these franchisees uh, typically should do well. I, I don't have a doubt that these guys will not do well in the next two, three, four years. And even if you look at the price action, which is very important in a bear market kind of scenario, uh, if you look at price action, these are the first banks which have broken out. It's not been the Indusind Bank, it's not been the Kotak, it's been these kind of uh, axis and ICICI which, which are showing very long-term breakouts. So uh, we, we, we're very positive on uh, these, these two banks. Okay. Uh, a lot of queries, Amit, for you that people have asked, and we'll ask some of those. I mean, uh, about your, somebody's asking about your view on Edelweiss and Edelweiss and NBFCs would be an interesting conversation as well, but we'll just come back to that in a bit. All right. I think Nidoj has already alluded twice that he wants to go to Amit uh, and ask him about the NBFC space and Edelweiss. So I'll just come to you with that one, Amit. Uh, you've had a positive outlook on Edelweiss some time ago. I mean, do you still hold that? And uh, what's the overall outlook on the entire space and whether or not you would be a buyer? So we still hold Edelweiss, but we, this is just a disclosure that we have vested interest, we can sell, buy anytime. So Edelweiss is divided into six, seven businesses. The capital market, the, the business, wealth management, asset management, insurance, ARC, NBFC. Out of the NBFC business, they have 46,000 crores of loans, which is not a problem. But the 12,000 crore loan given to real estate. So out of 46,000 crores, 12,000 crore loan is given to the real estate division. So those is typically a problem. Now, now we'll speak about the real estate business only because that is the reason why the stock has come down. Uh, so real estate, so they have two things in real estate. One, they have an AIF, which is 15,000 crore of AIF. On that, they make 2% fee loss hua, that, that is client's loss. So that is not a big problem. Your flat 300 crore fee they get on the AIF book, which is like a mutual fund kind of thing. Uh, the second is their own exposure towards real estate. They have a 12,000 crore exposure. Now, if you divide that exposure, more than 80% exposure is towards, uh, more than 70% exposure is towards projects which are already more than 80% completed. If a project is more than 80% completed, you can just fund him a lot more money and finish the project. Because once the project is finished, it is very easy to solve, uh, like to sell it and get the money back. So that's not a problem. The problem is the 10-15% book, which is where the project is less than 15, uh, 50% completed. So that's the point. But if you see that, like even if the default happens, I think they have one of the best ARCs in the country. So if the default happens, they will just not let the builder default. The, 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 the loan will be sold to the ARC and the ARC will then restructure the loan. And they have done this in the past. So if you look at how they have done it in the past, they've done it for three malls and about five, six residential projects. So they've done it in the past. I don't see why they will not do it in the future. The street's very cautious right now. This quarter will be a weak quarter, of course. There is no growth in NBFCs, but the normal growth rate what of 30-40% in NBFCs has now changed to 20%. So some derating is was necessary. They were trading at 4-5 times book. Uh, now I think the new normal would be somewhere around 2-3 times book. Edelweiss is already trading at 2 times book right now. The book values are somewhere around 80. So I think from these levels, they again become compounders, they'll bounce back. Uh, but you know, you need to see 1-2 quarters and then take a very large call on this. But for now, we are, we are holding on to our positions. 
Amit, take a moment to thank you for joining in today and giving us your thoughts. Really appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Neeraj. Thank you so much. Yeah.